Well, Joe, you certainly gave it a really good go against the league leaders and fancied side in Dartford. In the end, just wasn't quite enough this afternoon, was it? No, it's just, um, at the moment, it's basic errors that are costing us. Um, very basic defending. So I've just said to the boys there, that second half display um, was right up there, really. It was very, very good. We've got to go careful because we lost the game. But if you're looking at performances, then, well, you can see the applause. You can see, I've got to say, the moment when we're in the ascendancy, how this place goes up is massive thank you again to the support. Again, over 1,100. Um, they can see a team that's trying to win a football match. They can see the effort they put in it in the second half. Um, plus the first half, um, it's not effort. It's just key moments of the game when they're not concentrating. 28 minutes in and we've we've started the game really well, actually. It's a very tight game. There's nothing in the game, I don't think. Steve said there that they he thought they had the first half and obviously he said we were terrific second half and he said, if you play like that, we're going to end up as a very, very good tight side at the, near the top of the league. But I still think up until 28 minutes, it was very even. Um, it's a basic mistake from our skipper and he knows that and he held his hand up. Get on with it. But then the second goal is, is, is really poor, actually. Ryan pulls off a save that he can only sort of parry down. They hook it back in and... All their goals at the moment being scored from like around the six-yard box, which means we're not defending our goal very, very well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a big moment for the boys at halftime. I'm not going to hide away from that. You know, 2 nil down against the league leaders. Let's make no bones about it. What is a very, very good squad? There's some very good players in there. Probably, probably the best over the games I've been watching. Um, probably one of the best sides I've seen at this level. So Steve's assembled a very, very good squad. And we know he's got a very good budget to be able to go and do that. Um, but our reaction to the second half has made me really proud of the boys, actually. Proud to be here at Bath City because the place erupted. It did. It really erupted. And I've just, we've, we've just watched the clips back. Aside from the goal, we've had six chances second half there. Six. They've had one. It's their breakaway and they've scored. Um, and that's our luck and that's us at the moment. I'm not saying it's down to bad luck. We're losing games. But that's just the way it's going. You know, there's, there's moments in that game where they save one on the line. Um, Cody Cook has a header uh, from a corner. Alex Fletcher then has another corner from excellent work from a player I thought Elliot Freer was excellent mm. second half. Marley has a header. Cody then goes through in a 1v1 at the end. 83 minutes, is it 84 minutes? He goes through after Tom Smith slides him through. Um, and that's to go 2-2 in the game. So these are really, really good chances. Ben has a header from a, from a corner as well. So real key moments, really penning them in. But the sucker punch is the third goal and it, it, it kills us off. So, um, no, lots of, even though we lost the game 3-1, Mark, there's, there's lots of positives to take from that. Went into the game in slightly different shape, players in different positions. Elliot Freer played in a more sort of withdrawn role, but he really got forward so much in that second half and was a constant threat, wasn't he? Yeah, he wasn't meant to be. Um, so we set up in a 3-4-1-2, if you like. Um, we know that Steve's teams like to play a 4-1-3-2 and overload the middle of the pitch. The wide players go wide and then come in inverted as well so that they always have a pivot man at the bottom who goes and gets on it, generally Hussein, but he changed that around a little bit today. Um, with Jeb, they're clever players. The two at the top, he's got an abundance of strikers on the bench. Um, the two at the top are always lively, like to counter press really well. So if they go in and give the ball away, they're going back, get it back as quick as they can. And um, hey, listen, they're a tough, tough team. The two fullbacks are very athletic. But I've got to say, Marley, once the left back over there was on a booking, Marley's destroyed him second half. It's a really great performance. I don't know how Ryan Clark's got man the match from the sponsors. I, I find that farcical, I've got to say. Um, I thought Alex Fletcher was terrific today. I thought Elliot Freer's second half performance was excellent. But I thought Marley Francois, what a good player he looks. You know, we put him in a wing-back role today. Um, he's a winger or he's a 10 or 11, whatever you want to say, a 7. Um, and at wing-back, he's worked ever so well. He's tracked back in again, won balls back, took us up the pitch, got by people in 1v1s, delivered some great balls. So, um, no, lots, as I said, lots of positives, Mark. I'm not going to be doom and gloom. I'm really not. They're the league leaders for a reason. Um, but I think Steve, if he's been totally honest afterwards, he'll know he's been in a hell of a game there today. He'll have to go away and go, do you know what? Bath probably deserved. We did. We deserved something out of that game. If he wants to give them the first half, that's fine. But as I said, up to 28 minutes, we were still very close. Um, but we've got to cut out these mistakes. Um, players don't do them. Players don't make mistakes for, <laughs> on purpose. Um, but as I said, I need to look at it because too many goals are being scored in our box. Too many goals are near fringes of half time as well. Must be extra annoying for you. Yeah, because if you go one nil, and especially going down the slope then second half, we all know, don't we? It was almost like it was getting sucked in the goal there second half. Um, and that's credit to our supporters again. They make such a difference. This year, I think they've been a different level. Not just in the numbers. And I've said it now after every game. 
all the away games, they've been really good. And, you know, they clap off the team there as if we won a game because they know the effort that we've put in. And I said to the boys at half time, or I said to them before the game, actually, that was nowhere near our identity at Oxford. That wasn't a Bath City team. But today you've seen a Bath City team. We've lost the game. I know that. I'm not, I'm not deluded. We've lost the game. We've lost three games in a row. So we need to get back on and start winning games or at least stop the rot. But that isn't a team out there that looks like a relegation team that I've seen someone put on social media already. That's just a joke. Um, it's a team that is building. It's a team that's trying to get some continuity. We've been very unlucky. We've lost Ryan Harley overnight, so he couldn't start today. Josh Hours came in, I thought, done terrific. Um, so that upset our, um, our shape. He was fit Thursday night, but Friday morning his hip and his hip flexor wasn't quite right. We know we've lost Mo, Mo Torre and we know we've lost Callum Wood. When we lose three or four players, that affects us. Um, to illustrate the difference between the squads, and they brought two players on, two attacking players who linked up to score their third goal as well, which sort of mm. demonstrates, and I think they probably had a couple more sat in the stand as well, whereas we were down, I presume, to our last 16 players. Yeah. So I spoke to Steve before the game. He's got 20 players, 20 players to choose from, and he says he can take off three or four, and it won't change. It's three or four will be like for like. Um, at the moment, we haven't got any attacking options on the bench. You look at the bench, and that's no disrespect to the players. Um, they're very good lads. They're good players. But we've got um, defenders and we've got midfielders. We haven't got anyone that's going to go and hurt anyone in an attacking sense. So um, that's something we've got to look at as well. Maybe we have to adjust that, try and change the bench, try and bring someone in that's going to make a difference. But as I said, we've got Mo Torre to come back as well. He was here today, wasn't quite fit. So he's got another week. Let's hope we can get him back in for next Saturday. But... Um, yeah, I've got to stay positive with the group and I will, I will, definitely. A lot of hard work went into this week, a lot of soul searching after Oxford that people wouldn't have seen from myself, the staff and also the players. But the biggest, the biggest compliment is a manager, and especially when you're 2-0 down then after that, is, is to see that they work for you and you get a reaction. And um, we saw one hell of a reaction from my team today. So I gave them full credit afterwards, remembering that we've lost a game of football. You know, if people want to come at me and say, well, you keep praising them when we've lost, they're right. We have lost it. But um, I have to say, as I see it, and I saw a group there that was full of endeavour, full of spirit, wanted to play for Bath City Football Club and um, put in a performance there that we should have got something from the game. Third game running next week, we're playing a team that were unbeaten at the start of the season, Braintree Town, who were without a fixture this afternoon. And we, we know they're the sort of team never say die as well. And they've really sort of turned it around and since they replaced their manager last year. So expecting a tough one there in Essex? <coughs> yeah, I haven't seen any of their games yet. So I'll have to have a look. I know they didn't play today because there was COVID in the camp at Hungerford. So the Hungerford team, I know we're here today watching the staff. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, you, listen, we there's no easy games anymore, Mark. Um, I have to say the level of football has gone up now. It has gone up. Teams, to, I said to you before, teams from 1 to 14 have really gone up. I think there's some really good players, some really good managers, good coaches, good teams. I have to say also, without getting myself in trouble, I don't think the officials are at the level yet. And it looks like they've stayed and it looks like they haven't come out of lockdown at the level of what some of the football is. And that disappoints me. And I don't want to mention any circumstances or any instance in the game other than that. They have to get up to speed quickly because the game is starting to get better and better in National League South for sure. Um, not their fault we lost the game again, I'm not saying that, but there's some key moments in the game they need to be better with. And um, if we're trying to improve and get ourselves better, then they have to as well. So, um, yep, fine, we'll have, a, we'll have a positive week. We've got Tuesday, Thursday training. Um, reflect on the game again, and then come in with a game plan for Braintree. Best of luck for next week, Joe. Cheers. Thanks, Mark.